Hey everybody, how you doing? Have you had a good week? Uh, funny, isn't it? The difference the week makes. Uh, weather done a complete turnaround. Well, the temperature ain't done a complete turnaround. Um, really warmed up. Uh, so I, during the week, midweek, um, I think Wednesday, Thursday, and that lot, it was hitting about 14, 15 degrees. Um, quite confusing for the old wildlife and then at the weekend sort of like Saturday was okay but wet I mean horribly wet but then it sort of got Sunday it sort of turned real cold again went down to about two degrees three degrees during the day so uh, those of you who don't heat and that lot the old pond temperatures must be fluctuating confusing for the poor old fish and everything like that but anyway so um had to decorate a little bit this weekend uh keep my dear lady wife uh, happy i had to sort of get out and do a bit more decorating otherwise i've been dragged in by my ear and that lot and told to keep away from the pond uh but managed to get out and do a little bit uh, weather allowing again i mean it's that time of year isn't it where you are battling the elements all the time um but I finish off me finish off my box uh for the dechlorinator um and put in some uh, blanket weed treatment obviously done all the filter cleaning and pond testing and everything like that but anyway but um dechlorinator uh, like i said i'll be talking about that a little later on um about why do we dechlorinate we all know pond water is bad for us but you know just sort of go into the whys and wherefores of it not all technical and scientific -y and Mincer sort of type stuff. It's uh, you know just the basics. Anyway, crack on the wood video, and uh, I'll speak to you again in a minute. All right, see you in a second. So, just escaped the wallpaper in just for a quick minute to come out and feed the fish. It's just stopped snowing actually. Um, absolutely peed it down yesterday all day, so I couldn't really get out and do anything yesterday because of the rain. Uh, I mean, it, it was proper coming it down. And, uh, and this morning it started snowing. It hasn't settled, but it was in the air and uh, falling quite reasonably. Um, it's a lot colder than what it looks actually, it was 1.5, 2 degrees at the moment, so, but yeah, um, so come out, just have a quick look at the fish. Just in bed, uh, so they're probably going to come up and say hello. And Chad's there. Chad? The Chad, or should I say Chad the Char it's Suri. Same thing, same fish. Just makes me laugh actually. But um, what technically is a, a defect on a Chagoy um, has been made into a, another breed really and charge more money for it. <laughs> um, but yeah, he's a Chag to me. Yeah, there's the new Tanshu, looking well, the old Tanshu, uh, soon is really coming out on that one. Patch. Patch there, and uh, I suppose lips will be, uh, Amanda will be round in a minute. Uh, Amanda's a bit annoying at the moment, we've got the feeding room. There she is down there. And when I first feed them, she's first there. Her and Patch are both first there, being the biggest. Um, but Amanda seems to sort of like she come up, she'll gobble, 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 take her feed, and then she'll need a bit of a rest. And then as she swims away and she turns, she deliberately, and I reckon it's deliberate, deliberately flips her tail. So it scares all the others off it away into the food and obviously spills everything out of the ring 
into the uh, into the pond. Then that also gets picked up by the skimmers. If you sort of say, well, yeah, I'm coming back in a minute. The rest of you can sort of like you bugger off, like you're not having any. Uh, I might try and catch it on camera for you one day. But, yeah, like I said, it's annoying because I'm having to constantly empty out the skimmer. And Kirsty, the cat of the my granddaughter's fish. And the thing that's seen me on that has just come out, so what it is when I've got it is uh, fascinating. It's just, uh, I'm not liking the spotting on, on it. You know, it's just wish I'd fill up form just there, but so you can sort of cover a little spots like cows. Yeah, I like it as they formed. I know it's sandy and not a shower, so they do form different. Looking good. But anyway, yeah, so the heat pump's been performing well. Uh, I've got pretty cats on there, look. Pretty cat prints. Well, I think that's pretty cat prints, actually, I don't know. That looks more like squirrels to me. Uh, might have a squirrel floating around the garden. There you go, outside temperatures 2 degrees, set so 16 degrees in there. Go listen. You can hear it now when you open it, but I mean that is so quiet. I've got to say, hand on heart, that I'm really really impressed with these two air pumps so far. The Jacquard Jabo. Uh, PA range, uh, I mean they are absolutely fantastic, if you've been following my um, channel you'll know I've had these a few weeks now and uh, you know they, they're not what you call your budget range but I mean they're a hell of a lot cheaper at other brands out there and I've got to say so far so many weeks in uh, um, I can't fault them quiet performing really well and they seem a little bit more powerful than what their equivalent power rated friends are um, that's a 45 and that's a hundred um, I can easily sort of like add another 25 even 50 litres of uh, media into the Nexus there and I think that'll bubble it quite easily and the 45 like I said I'm running on the bottom train and I'm having to uh, off some of the air because it's too powerful so yeah really really impressed with them I can't can't um, can't pick them up enough so far I suppose the only thing really now is the test of time see how they're going to do over time see whether they keep performing well whether they don't break down but at the moment great great pumps really really impressed Wi-Fi unit Lights are still on, works really well. Like I said, I check on it when I'm away during the week. So, hopefully, I'll get a chance to uh, start piling in the summer feed when things start getting a bit warmer I expect to see a great big bit of growth out of that yummy um, now I'm going to put some uh, 
well, I'm still toying with it. I haven't made a decision yet whether I'm going to put some blanket weed treatment in there to deal with the blanket weed on the bottom because it is sort of like preventing uh, a lot of the, some of the rubbish on the bottom heading down towards the bottom crane. Uh, so I'm not well sure if I'm going to treat it or whether I'm just going to put the clay, clay in and see what the clay does. Um, but it's only appeared when I stop uh, when I stop claying. Uh, probably be better to treat it first and then add the clay next week. Um, the only problem is just, uh, with the Aquasoft Resolve is what I use. Um, especially just sort of like sprinkle it around the pond without mixing it up. But obviously because you've got the covers on that can be a bit difficult. So uh, I'll probably mix it up in a watering can. Pour it into the pond here. Let the uh, returns push it around the pond and then probably turn the pump off so it doesn't get sucked straight down the drain give it a give it half an hour or so to settle and um leave it and like i said it doesn't cloud your water too badly well it doesn't cloud your water at all really and uh, with the aqua aqua sort of resolve compared to some of the other products you don't get no residue left over and you can use it in winter so even if your pond temps are low you can uh, use it so obviously as you all know heat is so it should perform to its uh, best standards. You know, it's just soon me on the... Uh, I haven't made it yet, actually. And it just disappeared. Check it off. As soon as we get the camera out, it disappears. And it comes back anyway, but yeah. The Sumi on the new Tancho is starting to uh, darken up quite nicely. Just hopefully uh, get a few more patches on it. Obviously because I live in uh, a hard water area it does tend to bring out the sumi on your fish a lot better than you do in softer areas. But then again sort of like you know it's um but you can see and it's darkening up so it was when I first got it. And there's the yammy you can see how well the yammy's grown. Uh, it was when I first got it, it's really growing really well and bodying up already at this age. So, uh, like I said, that would be one to watch um, next growing season just to see how much it's just put on. I'm not a big one of growing big fish, uh, I'm more of one, I'm more of a koi hobbyist who likes pretty fish, good patterns and nice coloration and stuff like that. I don't know, I'm not one for size. But I think with the yammy it'll be interesting just to see how big it does go. Anyway, back to wallpaper. So, temperatures are warmed up um, to what they were, well, apart from today, where the temperatures have dropped again. Um, but the uh, purification system and uh, trickle on the timer been working great this week uh, need to get that cable buried down need to get the door made and put on there and then mount the digiflow reader and everything all inside get it painted obviously you're not going to be able to paint it until it dries out which is unfortunate but just one of them things but yeah so far so good everything's looking happy like I said, I'll keep it covered for now until I get the door on and uh, take it from there. So hopefully I'll be able to do that when I finish doing a bit of wallpapering. All right, see you in a bit. So uh, despite the uh, the rain uh, again that came on, well in fact it snowed, uh, I managed to um, get the door on, finish, finish off the main construction of the box. Obviously it needs painting, uh, but too wet to paint um, you know, hopefully the wood ain't gonna warp or do anything basically it's just to keep the cold out off of the uh, water purification filters uh, so that's done you know, underneath there under that bit uh, that's going to become it's going to be dual purpose so I'm going to do that as a insect home so I'm going to get some bamboo uh, some cut up logs and bits and pieces uh, 
bits of brick and slate uh, so you've got frog home, insect home all that sort of thing because I have got frogs and toads in the garden uh, from when I used to have a sort of like a normal wildlife come sort of like goldfish pond before the koi pond and they sort of tend to hang around and come back every year um, I am going to have to dig a little pool for them I think so they can um, lay their frog spawn in a bit of free fish food no um, uh, so I'm thinking about doing that just a little pool somewhere in the garden I'll find somewhere but that's plans for the future too. yeah underneath that's going to be a, um, like I said insect home dual purpose uh, stops it looking so ugly and obviously paint the rest of it so I managed to get that all finished and um, I have put the old aqua source resolve in. Uh, just had enough to do one treatment. I'll have to get some more of that ready for next spring. And I don't know where you can make out. It clouded the water just a little bit. Not a lot. Uh, but just a little bit. I just gave me a bit of food so you know what it's like when you've got the camera in your hand. A little bit more. Yeah, I think it's just been fed and uh, I them out a little bit when I started falling in the resolve, they were like, because obviously I opened up the hat, they would come all, all come through and like going, oh, you're going to feed me, and all of a sudden the two tonne of water starts pouring on their head. Uh, like I said, with the resolve, like I said before, you're not, you basically, you just sprinkle it in the water, you don't need to mix it into a watering can or anything like that, you just measure out your required dose and you just go around your pond and you sprinkle it in like you're throwing garth feed around or something like that. And, um, but obviously because I've got the covers on, I can't get around the pond, so I did fill up a watering can full of pond water, mix the resolve in and then sort of like sprinkled it in and then hopefully that will sort of like settle and need to do what it's got to do. Uh, you don't need to turn off your UV with the resolve. And like I said, I'm not sure, but I need to put my steam goggles on. Um, it says right at the top there uh, comes blanket weave comes for listening to other treatments after continued use and this is why our brand of new treatment will work when others fail even at low temperatures uh, the only blanket the only blanket weed that reduces phosphates which can treat the blanket weed with. so yeah so we've got that in. Need to fill up the fish food. Do that in a little while, but yeah. So next week we'll see how that goes. Um, see if that solves the plant weed issue. Here comes the rain again. I've got to take the dog out. So I'll get that all closed up. Um, rain stops play. All right. Speak to you in a bit, guys. So. Dechlorinating the our tap water to go into our ponds. Um, we all know tap water bad, dechlorinator good. Uh, but why? Um, you know what? What is the reason we need to do that? And there is still many a pond keeper out there who uh, claim to never have dechlorinated their tap water when they've been topping up their ponds and say they've never had any problems many many people are still uh, uh, say that and still do that which and they say they you know I like said they've had no problems which in days gone by um, it's quite possible that that could have happened um, because of the chlorine was unstable um, when it was added to the water and it could gas off quite easily and you know in days gone past by the time it had actually reached your household the chlorine was virtually non-existent um but 
over the years obviously the processes and everything like that have got uh, better and chlorine is still in your tap water when it um, reaches your household and pond owners and service providers have um, been arguing the validity of watching the levels of chlorine um, and what levels of chlorine are harm harmful to aquatic life in your pond and then there's been this to and fro about who should or like who should be responsible which ultimately really should be the uh, um, service provider um, and like I say so but by not dechlorinating your water I mean it can be devastating to your pond and it can create untold oh timer on me lights have just gone out hold on a second <laughs> that's better <laughs> anyway um so it could be devastating to your pond uh, pond life not just your fish but you know a lot of aquatic life um and many and many a time um you if you sort of like let chlorine get into your pond um start with even koi and other pond life pond fish um, start off by showing no apparent ill effects uh, from the untreated water but it doesn't mean that the chlorine isn't stressing them out or causing them any harm and um, the amount of harmful damage that's been done to your fish depends on sort of like several other factors which I'll cover in a bit but just to sort of like uh put some facts into place um these are you know following little statements of sort of like fundamental scientific facts uh about chlorine and pond life and koi fish in general um and the number one no dispute really is concentrated level chlorine in your pond will kill fish and most aquatic life simple um, you know, we all know it and it's been proven. Um, but on sort of like lower levels, uh, chlorine in your pond, um, chlorine is basically a, an oxidizer which will remove the necessary slime coat off of your koi and other pond fish, obviously causing stress and then stress related illnesses. Um, chlorine again in your pond damages the gill structure of your koi and obviously other fish uh, this ends uh, causing long-term serious issues and making it difficult for the uh, for the fish to breathe um, if you have a pond that suffers from sort of like fluctuating pH levels um, as the pH uh, goes down in your pond then chlorine becomes more toxic so again something you have to consider um, the presence of uh, phenols, which is basically um, a toxin given off from uh, or, um, organic waste. So if you've got a pond, uh, say you've not got a bottom drain uh, and you've got a pump, but you still get an area where you get a bit of organic uh, mess, leaves and waste and that lot, sat in a corner, breaking down, um, it gives off, um, it can give off uh, a compound uh, like say called phenols and uh, which when it combines with chlorine um, becomes extremely extremely toxic and will kill, you, kill your fish very very quickly um, chlorine as I said before it's very unstable in water and it escapes the atmosphere by itself um, hence you know the people who used to sort of like spray their hair uh, spray the hoses in the air uh, on a fine mist to degas it um, you know this is when the chlorine was even more unstable than what it is now but um, if you fill a barrel with uh, fresh tap water if you um, put an aerator in it um, and leave it for about 24 hours and you test it for chlorine you'll probably find that it's virtually chlorine free so you know, if you don't want to add dechlorinating tablets and, you know, you've got barrel, room for barrels in your gardens, uh, there's one way you can do it. Um, and obviously, uh, 
you know, chlorine can be easily removed from your tap water with dechlorination, uh, dechlorinization units like uh, I've got the three stage or you've got the big blues or you can go down and buy your, your from your um, koi stores, you know, your, your liquid ones, liquid dechlorinators, um, which is a bit expensive for the easiest way to do it if you don't have a, you know, built in dechlorinator unit is to um, use sodium theosulfate. Um, in quite, quite big bags of the stuff on sort of like eBay or um, I think you can get it from the chemist, not 100% sure on that, but um, it's, it's widely available. Uh, and uh, you know, it's little crystals, and you just follow the instructions, add the right amount um, to the water uh, for your pond, and that will totally neutralize and it's cheap as chips rather than buying all the pre made chemical ones that you get. Um, I think you know, obviously, some of these have got sort of like added st stuff to help the stress coat of the fish and stuff like that. But like I say, you know, for the price of the stuff, it's the easiest way to do it. Um, so yeah, so I mean, like I said, so chlorine's easy got rid of. Um, now, when you do get say you like you've got a dechlorination unit and it gives up the ghost to stop working you know because you've not changed the filter for a while you know um it's sort of like low levels of uh chlorine in the water don't sort of like tend to give off very very many um symptoms straight away it's it's it low levels will not kill your fish straight away it's, it's a slow slow process but i'll cover that in a minute but when exposed to high levels of chlorine, um, you'll notice almost sort of like fairly instant before your fish die that um, they'll, they'll be showing severe signs of irritation, swimming erratically around, darting about stupidly, uh, or even attempting to sort of like actually jump out of the pond water. Um, but like I said, at lower levels, uh, chlorine is not necessarily life-threatening to koi and other pond fish. It can still harm them. And, you know, affected fish might show um, fast gill beats and then gasping at the water surface, um, trying to get enough oxygen into their, into their tissue. Um, and sometimes uh, these symptoms can be mistaken for low oxygen i mean they're all, almost be behaving as the same as if you got not enough oxygen in the water like you can get in the summer sometimes or possibly parasites or some kind of dill disease when like i said it's just your tap water to blame so what happens um when you do get chlorine into your pond water um basically Hemoglobin, we have it, all animals have it, fish have it. Um, hemoglobin, which is in the red blood cells, um, is what picks up the oxygen atoms. Um, and in koi and other fish, this happens at the gills. So the blood flows around to the gills, hemoglobin absorbs it, sends it out around to the rest of the body to wherever it's needed. Um, and this process is, you know, continuous sort of thing. Now, if any form of chlorine uh, actually enters the water, as the hemoglobin passes through the gills, it's affected in such a way that it becomes incapable of carrying oxygen. Um, so hence the fish sort of like acts like it's there's no oxygen in the water. Now, at low levels, um, hemoglobin cells are replaced every 90 days, and that's a complete uh, you know, almost every hemoglobin cell in the koi's body is is replenished every 90 days so at low levels it's not a permanent if your fish survives it's not permanent it's something that they can get over um, but exposure to higher levels of chlorine will leave the fish with reduced respect uh, <laughs> uh, uh, reduced respiration efficiency until the affected red blood cell uh, blood cells are, are replaced. Um, exposure to low levels of chlorine will cause a small reduction in efficiency, but like I said, at higher levels, it will cause greater damage 
even severe and ultimately suffocation even in if you've got the most aerated water in the world uh, high levels of chlorine will technically suffocate your fish now chlorine levels in the uk domestic supplies are normally in the region of about nowadays this is uh normally in the region of about 0.5 milligrams per litre um but when they're doing work on lines or flushing out lines they can actually raise this to four milligrams per litre not 0.5 four milligrams per litre um and you hear this happen sometimes that you know it, it, people's fish shops have been wiped out when they've just been doing what they always do they've got everything dechlorinators on and everything like that um and this does tend to be more in the um summer sort of like just before the weekends is believe it or not is when it happens um and obviously sort of like in normal times uh, when you've got the koi shows this can be even more problematic because you've got all the vats and everything held and you know the shows are held in the summer so <laughs> it's it can be a bit of a nightmare so yeah um so a bit of research on the internet uh, brings up uh, sort of like a little list of uh, what levels of uh, chlorine in your pond can do to your pond um taken from a couple of sources there are other sources out there that will sort of like differ slightly but just as a rough guide for you um so 0 0.006 milligrams per litre um of chlorine in the pond will kill fish fry in about two days so you know 0 0.006 it's so small you know but it will kill, kill your koi fry in about two days Insect larvae, such as dragonfly larvae, mayfly larvae, stuff like that, will um, will be killed off at 0 0.003. 0 0.002 will damage the sensitive skin on tadpoles. Um, frogs even as well, and any other amphibians, newts, whatever. So, you know, it's really, really low levels on them. Um, 0 0.02 is the maximum levels which experts say an, ad, uh, an adult fish can tolerate. Um, 0.25 milligrams per litre is a level which only the hardiest of koi and other pond fish can, can survive. Uh, but And then you just go up to 0.37 milligrams and it's only 0.37 milligrams per litre is the level which all pond fish is going to die. Um, so, you know, it just goes to show so it's it's minute amounts really when you look at it so what are you going to do if you suspect that you've got uh, chlorine damage to your pond fish um, obviously if you've got any of the uh, treatments available the liquid treatments or the uh, crystals that I said earlier are available plant them in straight away in it's instant fix easily chlorinates straight away but remember when you're doing that, you're treating all the pond water, not just the water. I put hundred liters in, so I treat for hundred liters. It don't work like that. You have to treat for the full amount of the pond. So if you've got a ten thousand liter pond, you have to treat ten thousand liters. Um, but if you don't have any of that available, um, by the off chance you've run out of something like that, um, then you can increase your aeration as much as possible for a couple of days and hopefully your fish will come through it and that will obviously the movement and everything like that will gas off the chlorine um but yeah the best way if you do suspect any sort of contamination of chlorine contamination that's to get in there with your treatments whack done so but now to throw another spanner into the works and that lot. And recently, um, one problem with water treatment facilities is uh, using chlorine to treat water is that it breaks down relatively quickly. And another concern 
um, that what companies are having using chlorine is that it can combine with certain organics that might be pres present in the water source. Um, it can then uh, um, mix with these organics and forms. Now, see if I could get this right. Is uh, tri Hello, methanes, a family of carcinogens. Um, so obviously they're worried about our health. Uh, which, yeah, rightly so. But consequently, many water companies are now switching from using chlorine to chloramine, um, which is a compound which combines both chlorine and ammonia. So doubling the poisoning effects of your fish. Uh, it's a lot more stable than chlorine, uh, and like I said, but it poses, you know, a major headache for us pond enthusiasts, koi enthusiasts. Um, chlorine neutralising uh, chemicals um, such as sodium uh, thiosulfate, I'll try and keep that right, uh, only neutralise the um, chlorine portion of the chloramine neglecting the even bigger problem of the deadly ammonia. Um, obviously a pond's biological filter will eventually convert the ammonia to nitrite, but at the time it might take it might take a bit of a while and the amount that you put in could be more than a fish could tolerate. And and also the initial presence of um, the chlorine in a sort of chlorine side of the chloramine might have damaged your biological filter anyway uh you know rendering it useless so yeah so it's, um chloramine is something you've got to watch out for now you can go onto your local uh water suppliers website the ones that supply your household and you can quite easily find the information there of what they're using um at what levels uh if you do have chloramine and uh, you're running uh, dechlorinators like, like like the one I've got, the three stage dechlorinator, um, you can, when you buy your filter packs, you can get ones that are set up for uh, chloramine. So it will remove the ammonia side of it and the chlorine side of it before it gets to your pond and that lot. But like I said, so don't just buy uh, a three stage chlorinator or anything, uh, you know, big blues or anything like that until you've checked to see what you've actually got being delivered to your household um, because you have to have the right filter combination. But anyway, so a bit of boring waffle. Uh, most of you probably already knew that. But for those who you didn't understand, you know, about the chlorine side of things, I hope that cleared it up. It went too, you know, I didn't mumble on and sort of spill my words. Anyway, so going to wind it up there for this week. And uh, snow's forecast again for next weekend. And I've still got to finish off the decorating. Yeah, but I will get out in the garden, hopefully, at some point. Uh, do a bit more out there. Have a look at the fish, maybe get the underwater camera out. I'm just hoping for a bit of sunshine. I just want spring to come. I've had enough now. All right, guys. Stay safe. Look after yourselves. Yeah, keep yourselves busy. And remember, it's not a hobby. It's a lifestyle. Take care, everybody. See you soon. Bye.